Well, hello everybody and welcome to Signature Style Saturday or Sunday because we're shooting a bunch of stuff today and I'm not sure which day it will go on, whether Saturday or Sunday, but they're all fun projects. It's been a while since I've been at the potting table and let's just say we're gonna be having some fun with topiary and from many different perspectives. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of hacks, one related to orchids. I'm going to answer that riveting question of what have I decided to do with the lamb's ear um, and just some other miscellaneous things regarding pests and disease control. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, what we're gonna do today is some trimming on my myrtle topiary. And the same principle applies to the technique and everything if you're using boxwood, if you are doing uh, like lemon cypress or whatever, we're basically just wanting to create a round form on top of a stem, typically called a standard topiary form. And by the way, because I know you will ask, I got these at Passiflora Kalamazoo. We will make sure to put a link below. I know that recently, well not recently, but. A a couple of few months back I talked about this and she sold out and she had to get them on back order and I, I know it's difficult because these can be kind of hard to find but they are worth it if you do find them and you can start your own and in the past we need to put up a topiary playlist or something Stuart back when we had Monica here and she showed us how to start some of our own from clippings okay so I've got one here but I've got two more that I'm going to be working on today and when I say working on them, we're not just going to be clipping them. Um, I might or might not transplant one. I keep these on a tray in the middle of my solo fire pit. And I love placing my topiaries on trays like this because in addition to, yes, capturing debris and stuff when it rains heavily, they also capture rainwater or the water from when I am hand watering them. And that's okay because myrtle topiaries hate to dry out. And even if they stand in water over the course of the day, that is not a problem. And it also contributes to a pretty patina on the pot. Now that is not true of all plants. Most plants do not want to be sitting in water in their saucers, but myrtles are the exception. So I'm going to work on these three. I transplanted them earlier. Do I have any tags hanging out, Stuart? No, no tags. Oh, good. <laughs> tag check, Leah, tag check. Tag check. Okay. So you can see that these are, I've got two in identical pots. One, because it's a little bit of a different shape and because it's got more girth at the top. It's in a different pot, but it's nevertheless in a pot that is of the same material. So these are all in Italian clay. I love these. I used to buy them. Now sometimes I will buy a plant from Tr Trader Joe's just because it comes in one of these kinds of pots because I really love them. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to start clipping on these because some of them like this one needs a little bit of clipping, but this has a pretty strong round form. And these are starting to go a little bit wayward. They have some kind of um, errant branches that are just kind of, well, they're just not playing according to the rules, <laughs> let's just say. And we are going to rein them in. Not that there's anything wrong with playing against the rules. But in this case, I really want them during their high growth period, which is now and during the summer, these love full sun, I want them to be clipped into a ball shape so they will assume that shape as they continue to grow. Now, what do you need? Well, I find a couple of things indispensable and some of them dispensable, but they just make my life easier. Easier. Number one, I've showed you guys this before. A lot of you have bought them. I need to get another one. This is just one of these fold up tarps that you can put on a tabletop. I keep this underneath my kitchen sink and you can see it snaps and unsnaps. But what it does is it just contains the debris. And after I am finished with my clipping that I can just dump it out and dump the clippings into the trash or my flower bed or, or just wherever. The other thing you need is some good clippers. Now, you can use regular scissors. 
and sometimes I do. I have, I don't know how many pair of these that I just buy at the dollar store, one of the few things that I do. These were Betty Crocker ones, and I'll buy like six at a time because I don't know about you, but I can never have enough scissors. So you can use regular scissors. If you are pruning something that has a really thick uh, branch or stem, or I'm wanting to clip off something that has real heft to it or resistance to it, then you might want pruners. For me, I typically like my Joyce Chin. These are my topiary pruners of choice. And all I'm gonna do is just start snipping back to the profile. I was at John Terman's recently for the garden tour and he said, oh, would you just come and help me prune my boxwood balls? It scares me. And I know it does scare people, but just be brave. They will grow out. It's intuitive. The more you do it, the more you know how to do it. Now, sometimes I will put something underneath here to catch the clippings so that they don't get, they don't kind of collect here at the base on the surface of the soil. But here I don't really care because afterwards I just kind of do that and I blow them off. So, okay, so there we go. And now I'm just going to continue around here. Stuart with his brilliant photography. This is a fun one because yeah, it's a good spot for it. Yeah, the light's good. Yeah, and you can kind of <laughs> you can kind of see. Here I'll get to some of these really satisfying cuts. I can hear you guys out there cheering me on. Um, and by the way, comment if you have gotten into topiary recently, either because of me or because of another YouTuber or just because you discovered it on your own and have become obsessed like I, let me know. And by the way, I don't think I ever answered this question. Do you recall, Stuart, that we did a video talking about, and let's put right here, let's put a picture of them, the Oakland hollies that I have planting, planted on both sides of the door to nowhere oh, yeah. on the east side of the house and they were growing in a fashion that would have make, made a perfect double ball topiary and I was questioning you guys, should I or shouldn't I? Um, and what is the answer to that? Well, I will tell you after, <laughs> after we take a break here, Stuart. Now, as you're clipping this, remember to kind of do this, just like your hairdresser does when she clips your hair. Um, give it a 360. And by the way, the answer to that question was, I decided not to topiary them. I decided to, to just keep them in a classic Christmas tree form, conical form, because there, it would be less maintenance. And also because I think I want to light them at Christmas time. And I think that will be easier to do. And I can be a little bit more balanced with it if they're just in a conical shape, but we will show you. Okay. Tip, and you can already see. Can you guys see Leah's sitting over there? Can yep. you tell that it looks oh, you can the see difference majorly, between yeah. this one and that one? It, it totally shaped up. And you can be, you know, you can be pretty aggressive in pruning on this because it will grow back very, very quickly. I always think of my my buddy Loy up in Maryland and in Maine, who grows the most magnificent topiaries I've ever seen. Okay. Now one thing to always kind of be on the lookout for i have found is sometimes see how it's got kind of a light bulb shape down here and i really want it to be rounder okay Stuart, come in close here if you can you may have to get off the tripod oh, no, i can just use the tripod to do it minute. but what i want to show is the difference that taking off some of the low-lying branches makes in reducing that light bulb form. See if I left that there, okay? There and without it. And I can also take off a section of that. So I'm gonna take off some It's of like removing this. the bottleneck of the light yes, bulb. Yes, it's yeah. removing the bottleneck of the light bulb. And you can kind of do that. Here's another example right here. See, when I remove that, mm -hmm. 
Now, does pruning this encourage new growth? Yes, it does, but the new growth will be more dense, make the, the ball fuller, and ultimately larger. Okay, and I'm gonna do this. You see how easily those blew off? So, now that I have finished clipping, I'm gonna blow off the surface. I went ahead and did this one too. And now I want to top dress them both identically. Now here's a tip. If you are working in the sun like I am and if it is hot, and if you have ice water nearby, don't put your ice water so close to your topiary that when you blow off the clippings, <laughs> you blow the clippings into your water, which I have done about a million times. I had coffee yesterday morning and I bit down on a fly big time that was in my coffee that I was not aware of. It kind of traumatized me a little bit, a little protein. Okay, so I've got both of these. These have recently been watered. This one used to be in a pot that was this size, but I transplanted it for two reasons. One, it kept blowing over, and also because I wanted these to be in the same kind of pot and kind of symmetrical. So how am I going to top dress these? Well, some of them on my table, which I will show you later, I top dressed in soapberry. Sometimes I top dress these in gravel, but these in particular, because these might go inside, I'm gonna top dress these in some sheet moss. Now the sheet moss I got online, though you can find it a number of different places. I think my, maybe my most recent batch I got at Home Depot. Now, you'll probably say, Linda, that is just a mosquito bug catcher. Why do you have this? That is gross. Well, because there is um, a method to my madness and uh, an objective behind this grossness. And what is that? Well, number one, I've got the moss in here and I, and I have it hydrated because it makes it that much easier to mold around the surface of my topiary. But you'll say, oh, but look at this algae in here. Yes, and I say, look at this wonderful algae because what will I do? If I, you have pots that you want to age and you've got some kind of tray like this or something with standing water, then those pots that I want to age, I will put upside down in here and then I will cover it with a piece of plastic so that it really will get hot, intense, and more importantly, it will encourage the gross growth of this moss and mold and fungi on the exterior of the planter itself and make it age almost immediately. Another reason, and by the way, this is a boot tray. This is a copper one, but you can also just get hard plastic ones. And I find what they work great for is watering some of my, my tabletop topiaries or other plants that cannot dry out while I'm on vacation. So Leah will tell you, won't you Leah, that when she waters for me when I'm gone, that I put my topiaries in here and I just fill this up with water for the same reason being um, of the tray that was on top of my solo fire pit. I don't care if these stand in water, they will be the happier for it. It provides residual humidity. And yes, there might be a little bit of an issue with mosquitoes, but I can put some mosquito bits in here. And again, it's just contained to this area. So let's get some of this wonder sheet mulch and bring it up here and this will demonstrate just how easy it is to mold it around the base of the pot itself versus if it were still dry. I can get a really good custom fit. It's like sometimes when you wear a pair of shoes that are leather or whatever, they say get them wet mm -hmm. and then let them form to your feet because I don't want any gaps to show. And when this dries, it will be fine. If I'm concerned about fungus gnats or whatever, then I will use some of those mosquito bits because they work great for fungus gnats. So I've done that one. And now I'm gonna do this one. of this one 
And now I think these are really both gorgeous. So if I decide to bring these inside, what will I do? I will spray them with a little bit of insecticidal soap so I don't bring in ants or anything. Though, you know, that and roly polies, that's always a danger. It's just part of garden inspired living. Um, but these are pretty beautiful. I love the way they look and they are pretty symmetrical. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to put these over here temporarily, Stuart. Look how pretty they yeah, look sitting there. And you know, I know sometimes <laughs> this is always a bad thing because you can't see what things look like because it's always so green behind it. Yeah, so so Stuart, I'm going to snap myself inside for a minute. Okay. Okay. So this will be a little helper. You can see the difference. Now does that help a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, it's so bad on the steps, but yeah, it's actually okay. The does con help yeah, you can kind of see the contrast of the form. They look cool. Yes, I think they look beautiful. I'm they very look really thrilled. With the sunlight coming through. Yeah, like and <laughs> you know, tragically, as you guys might remember, I lost a number of my topiary that I had at the old house when we moved. This one I am not going to clip on quite so tightly because you'll notice it's got a larger sphere at the top and I want that to get even larger. I want to have some really large ones, some huge ones. And you'll notice guys, I'm, I'm not worrying about clipping in between leaf nodes or anything like that, which I might do on other type of prunings. I'm just clipping these. And also, I know some of you might ask, okay, how is this different from Eugenia? Those large ones that I've got up front, and that, by the way, you can find this time of year so inexpensively at so many different places. I've seen them at Home Depot. I've seen them at Walmart. I've seen them at Lowe's. I saw them at a grocery store even. And they are in the same family. They, too, cannot handle a frost. They have to be brought in, but they will get much larger and they are less expensive and much easier to find. And in fact, momentarily here, Stuart, I'm going to go. I hope you guys find this as meditative as I do. I mean, I do. Stuart, you'd probably find it more meditative if it weren't so hot and humid out. It's still pretty, it's still, I've always enjoyed these. It's yeah, fun I, for me to try to find that, to, to match the speed of you, like to, to match where your hand's going to be in but where's go, Where, I, where <laughs> I'm going to go next, a, and, and for that one, <laughs> that one clip, yeah, exactly. where the, you, when you guys have a vantage point, and you can see something that I can't see based on where we are positioned respectively. Sometimes I make it, sometimes I don't. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. That's the way it goes. But you guys out there but can I'm kinda... always trying to show them the sphere and like kind of move around. And make yeah. It, not just a, a two-dimensional image yeah, in front of Yeah, them. and I think that's the other thing. It's very three-dimensional. I've said it a million times. Well, not... Like how you have to spin it, you know, because yeah. you can't see it if yeah. you just well, look at it one you want it, Yeah, you want it to be balanced. And then always I get it in place, and then I see something that I can <laughs> Just like your hairdresser always has to kind of come it out. Okay, so now stay here, Stuart, if you like. You can hang out here. You can show them some pretties around here. Show them this corner. Look at how beautifully this corner. I'll give them a little short tour. Yeah, this corner is doing, and especially, now this has some yellowing leaves. Why? Because we've had so much rain that some things have been a little bit overwatered, but this is that laurel topiary that I got um, when I shopped my garden at the other house, and look how large it's gotten. And this I do not need to leave inside. This I can leave outside. Okay, here you guys go. Here's a question for you. Here's one question of the day. Uh, should it stay or should it go? Should it stay and figure out what to do with it or let it grow taller and fill this in or should it go? You guys tell me. If you were me, what would you do? And God help you if you were me, <laughs> if you were me. Okay, okay, so there you go. But now what I wanted to show you before I detoured there was,
these are the Eugenia. And by the way, Stuart, if you don't mind coming over here, look Thank at the, all these sweet ones that I mulched all of these in those soap berries. When we took, when we really did some drastic pruning on the soap berry tree, which you guys will see, I don't know if you'll see that today or on Monday, uh, but lots of these berries fell and I it was the first thing I thought when I got here and saw them. I thought, okay, now where am I going to see these around? The around and <laughs> where's Linda yeah, going to use these? Saw them. I came back here and was like, yep. There well, it was, my, it was a sweet <laughs> girls next door that saw them and thought they looked like jewels and they were collecting them. And I thought, well, I can collect some of those on Very top Linda. of my on top of my topiary. I could see you spray painting a berry copper. A berry co Well, yeah. Except for those are kind of fleshy. Yeah, not that, those. Yeah. I just mean the color, the look. Oh the yeah. Thing. It's, yeah, you've seen me spray it, paint things before. Now, th this is the difference here between a Eugenia and a Myrtle, even though they're in the same family. And these were some that I got for next to nothing at Walmart a couple of years ago. They need some clipping, too. I haven't been as attentive to these. One of them lost the top ball completely, and now it's a single ball. But, you know, that's okay. For it's what price it wanted I to be, yeah. obviously. Yeah, it's what it wanted to be. It was expressing itself. Um, <laughs> so these I haven't munched in anything. But that is the difference. These have larger leaves, typically. They are less expensive, typically. They grow larger. They're a larger scale. I saw some of these many, many years ago. Um, and I, I can't remember which of her homes, if it was at her Bedford farm or where Martha Stewart had some of these, and she had some that were huge, maybe just a little bit larger than the ones I have up front, and she overwintered hers as well, and I thought, gosh, what a great dramatic thing to do when you don't have to spend much at the store, and of course it also helps if you have the capability to overwinter them. Okay, so. I am going to do this last pot. To match this. And then when you come back, I will show you where I'm going to place these. Will it be inside? Will it be outside? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But you'll find out when we come back. Okay, one of my favorite things this year in the way of container plantings is this, what I call a pot de thème, a pot of thyme. And this is just creeping thyme. I bought it at Bricks. It was in little four inch containers. And I think I used three four inch containers for this beautiful, beautiful concrete it's pot. pot yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Normally this resides in front on the table on the social patio. Now, I love it for so many different reasons. I love it because I love how they're, the tiny little leaves, even yeah. Stuart said you were charmed by the tiny little leaves. I love the fact that it's got the fragrance of thyme. I like the way it kind of spills over the edge and I can train it. But I also love it as kind of, an, uh, of a concept, a pot de thème, a pot of thyme. So when I look at it, I kind of reflect on it and say, okay, you do have, you do have the thyme. And I once <laughs> gifted this. I love that. <laughs> I once gifted this to a very, very busy mom who said she didn't have time to garden, who said, and she didn't, she was very, very busy. I think she was working on her PhD. And I gave her one of these that had grown out like this one. And I said, here's your very opotatam, a pot of time. And one day you will have the time to do the things you want to do. And in the meantime, you can enjoy this. So I think it's fun. I want to do another one with a different type of time. Some varieties work better than others. This just basic creeping time works really, really well. Um, some of the, the the varieties that grow a little bit taller, like the lemon thyme or things, they don't tend to provide this kind of matting that almost looks moss-like. And so just look at that, but just experiment with it. I'm gonna experiment with another pot with a different look, because I think it's just fun. 
Okay, why mess with success, I thought. They looked so great here before. I still like them here. Now they look even better. Now they look very trimmed and tailored, and they all look as if they kind of relate to one another. They're top dressed the same. They're in the same material of pot. I've cleaned out the trough a little bit and I just think they look good. Another thing that I did because I want, you know, it's all in the details. So the stem or the trunk was secured to that stick or that post with some light, yeah, with <laughs> some, some light green twist ties, and I just took those off and I put something in here. This is an orchid clip, and that looks a little bit less in your face, a little bit more uh, harmonious with everything else that's going on. I think these look these look great. So I have already pruned two of the three on my table. I've got one more to do. These are actually, here's a tip you guys, these are actually in too much shade underneath this umbrella. So periodically what I will do is I will switch out these three for the three that are here in the sun. And that way by going back and forth, they all get the sun they need and I get the satisfaction of having their look in both, in both places. Now do I have others that still need to be attended to yes I do so I've got a number of these over here um, one thing that I'm going to put on my list here's maybe another tip for next time we all go thrifting you guys and that is I want to get some ceramic saucers not terracotta like this why because these are permeable so if i put these on the table it will make a watermark on the table itself and i don't want that i don't mind them being here because obviously this water kind of flows through these are the remaining ones that i still need to prune but over here i really want something like for example, these are two ceramic saucers or ceramic salad plates that I bought on another thrifting adventure. And now I want some smaller ones that I have plenty that are white, but I don't want white out here. I want them to be dark. I want them to be more earth colored, maybe in a green or a russet tone. I don't like this plastic here. So I'm gonna be looking for some saucers that are ceramic, you know, maybe saucers that go to a cup and saucer that have the feel of the outdoors a little bit more, but that I can also use on my tabletop so that it won't stain them. Um, I have another little orchid clip here to keep this guy standing up and flying right because sometimes when they have a tall stem, especially if it's not real thick yet, it will have a tendency to go wayward. So speaking of orchids, when we come back, I'm gonna show you a hack. Okay, this is one of those, those questions. Is it real or is it Memorex? <laughs> well, one of the, I love orchids and you guys have seen them displayed in my house on numerous occasions. And in case uh, you don't remember, Stuart, right here, Let's put the arrangement that I had in a blue and white porcelain cache pot starting out at Valentine's Day. For well, this kids. is one of those. This is oh, one yeah. of those orchids. That's how <laughs> long it lasted. This is the other orchid. And it went, it, no, I guess it went like this yes. to make a heart. Okay, so we'll, put, <laughs> we'll try to remember to put a picture up there. Okay, so, so what disturbs me then is the foliage still looks great, the plant is still healthy, but what it lacks is patience on my part to make it bloom again. And I also don't like them just sitting around without a bloom on them. So here is a hack. So take the real live, orchid foliage and repurpose it with a silk bloom. So this one is real and this one is fake. Now what I did was I just kept, when I bought this, it came with this wire trainer and I just kept that wire trainer and I kept the foliage and I used, remember I told you I let nothing go to waste, so the bits and pieces of, of uh, mossy mulch that I had from my other topiaries. I saved this and I used it to mulch these pots. 
which enhances their, the realism of the, silk, of the silk bloom. And then I just purchased, I have these in white, and I also wanted to have some in this kind of plum color because it looks beautiful in my office and I think it looks beautiful against this foliage. Yes. So I purchased some in this color. And then, first of all, this will really be long lasting. It can be in lower light. I think especially the white ones that I have, they look so realistic, I would defy you to even be able to tell the difference unless you came up and you literally kind of played with them. Even when you play with them and feel these, if you had your eyes closed, I don't know that you could tell the difference. That's how realistic these are. I was very curious to think, like, I've got a close up on this one and I was thinking, who at home can see, someone can surely just immediately tell what's going on, but I can't. Yeah, and from and from a distance, you couldn't. And the fact that the foliage is real, people will walk up to him and yeah, go, okay, is this real, real. Or, or is it not? So how, how did I do it? Well, basically, all I did was I, I, I tried to keep this real stem, and I just couldn't because there was just too much thickness. So what I did was I looked at the angle that this was growing before I cut it off. I just stuck it in like this and tried to replicate the angle in which it was growing and see how you can kind of mold these and sometimes if you mold it around something you can get that perfect torque, that perfect bend. Um, and then I'll just take these existing orchid clips and just secure it to the wire. Now, like I say, I tried to keep the original, the original orchid stem that the flower grew on, and it was a little bit difficult on that composition. I may or may not be able to do it here. But the stem itself was so beautiful that on this one, I cut the stem off and I put it in a flower arrangement. So what I'll do is now I will have two of these. I will cut this real white bloom and I will use it in a flower arrangement so it will not go to waste. That's and in good. fact, Stuart, I'm gonna run and get my snippers and do that right now. It hasn't built it at all. Yeah, it, it just, I think it looks so realistic. And this is an easy thing to do, to get more longevity out of your orchid plants. And also when, and it's, it's just such a money saver, you guys. And if you feel like, like the flowers, and you play around with them with their movement, but if you feel like the flowers themselves don't look quite realistic enough, then sometimes what I have done is just I immerse them in a solution of tea. So kind of strong tea and then that just ever so slightly browns and ages the petals. If it looks too white or if it looks too realistic or if it looks too clean and I want it to look dirtier. So. Reminds me of slightly burning paper to try to make it look Yeah, better. exactly, exactly. <laughs> And so there you go. I have two that I could put on my mantle that I could put someplace. And I think they're really beautiful. I think it's a great inexpensive hack. Let me know if you'll try it. Well, and here you go. I guess I haven't done an outfit of the day for a while. Most of today's outfit is compliments of thrifting, but let's start from top to bottom. I've got some Ray-Ban Wayfarers that I had to replace recently because I lost my original pair that I'd had for probably 25 years. I was devastated. So I bought a new pair. I got these off of Amazon, I believe, or Ray-Ban. I can't remember. I bought them online. My top is Gap. It is thrifted. My britches. I love these. These are so 70s. I feel like I'm in the 70s cool. show when I wear these. Um, and they're so comfortable, you guys, even in the heat, because they don't fit real tightly. These were also thrifted. Uh, my earrings I bought at Nordstrom Rack. I think they're kind of fun. Slide your hair back a little yeah. bit. You can't see them. Nordstrom Rack. Oh, there you go. And I've got just an assemblage of necklaces on from you know just a, a bunch of different places. Now, what I want to show you about today, 
I cannot speak highly enough of these sandals. These sandals are dupes. They are Birkenstock dupes. I want to say they were about $44, $45 versus the original. And right here, Stuart, let's put mine next to my son's that are real Birkenstocks and they are virtually identical. I have walked all around the neighborhood in these because all of my sandals now, I want to have great walkability. These do, um, they do run a little bit small, so I would suggest if you need these sandals that you size up, I typically wear a seven and a half or an eight, and I got these in an eight and a half. Like I said, I have walked all around the neighborhood. I walked all the way downtown, and my feet did not hurt. They were extremely comfortable and I think they're kind of cute in that kind of 70s way and for you keen sighted followers you will notice that yes I do have a pedicure <laughs> on both feet and this is the toe that constantly has an owie on it so there you go uh, oh and we should also because a number of you recently ha have noticed that That's I switched holy. my Ross my Ross my wrist band watch band I like this one. Uh, that I that I switched this out I've had this one forever and we'll put a link to this up to might be a good Father's Day gift because it's actually I think a man's watch band it's, I love those the reason I don't buy them is because I have hair you know the hair on my arm gets pulled out oh yeah hands. oh okay good well good to know good to know if you are if, if you are I looking have them, for Father's great, Day gifts I have a bald I have a bald loop around my wrist <laughs> It's from the watch. Okay, okay. <laughs> TMI, Stuart. T T TMI. TMI. Okay, so there you go. There's my outfit du jour. Well, if you don't have your own pumpkin growing in your garden, then I'm going to share mine with you. <laughs> and we're going to try to do this on a regular basis until it either gets eaten by bugs or something happens to it. So let's do our daily pumpkin check. So first of all, we have to kind of locate it. It's always hidden in here. And always, it's just kind of like, every day I get a little bit nervous because I think, oh, is the pumpkin going to be here or isn't it? But look right here. Oh, big. Can you see it? Oh, I see it from here, yeah. Yeah, he's all grown up. <laughs> and I, well, not all grown up. We've got a ways to go. But I noticed, I think down here, this is there. really growing very, very aggressively. And I think we've got another pumpkin right there. Right there. Oh, there we go. Oh, that almost had it. Can you see it? It's green. Almost. There it is. It's green. Once these guys start turning color, we'll be able to identify them a little <laughs> bit. Right now, the foliage still looks very, very healthy. It is climbing up. There's Mr. Amazon. It's climbing up the post. And actually, I've got some clips to help train it even more. But there you go. There's our pumpkin check for today. Well, I'm sure you have been staying awake at night wondering what is Linda going to do with her lamb's ear. <laughs> and here's what I've decided. And by the way, you guys gave me excellent feedback. And from a design standpoint, it was all fine. There were no wrong answers. There were just some that were a little bit more right for me. So, so many of you did notice that it really just didn't flow with the color scheme that I've got here. A number of you said, well, I could just cut off all the flowers and I've already kind of done that. But what I think, and oh, and by the way, a number of you said that the reason it looks out of place is because there is no rhythm and repetition of it. So I could dig it up and I could transplant some in other areas up and down the wall. And yes, I could, but it's hot. I'm lazy and all of these things that are already here are going to get a lot bigger. So I think what I'm going to do is dig it up, probably remulch that area when it's not so hot. I may add another little boxwood and I think I'm just going to call it a day. I'm going to gift, this was given to me as a gift and I'm going to re-gift it to someone else. And I think that is my, that is my final answer. But again, you guys gave this. You just gave such great input, input, and I loved it because you explained your ideas of why. You explained why it was good contrast, why the contrast didn't work, why there needed to be more of it, why there needed to be less of it. And I love from a design perspective how you guys put out the rationale for all of your thoughts. There was no wrong answer. There was just the right answer for me. And I hope you guys find lots of right answers for yourself this weekend as you live your own garden-inspired life.